Providing leadership, education, and networking opportunities, PWX is the place public works professionals come to learn how to tackle some of the biggest challenges our cities and counties face, and to ensure their workforce are prepared for whatever comes their way. You'll find it all right here on PWX TV. Welcome to PWX TV, where we bring you updates and insights into all the biggest issues in public works right here from the heart of Atlanta. If you're a public works professional or want to find out more about people that keep our city running, make sure to catch everything we've got to offer. Today, we focus on building the workforce and everything that goes into training and growing your team. We're one of the only prisons in the state of Ohio that train on a bobcat inside the fence. Hear how Columbus, Ohio is providing a second chance to prison inmates. It's absolutely a national problem. In a meeting on Saturday, there were 300 public works professionals and we said, who doesn't have a workforce challenge now? And one lone person raised their hand. And sit down with us to discuss some of the biggest workforce issues facing public works today and how APWA is helping. And we'll head back across the country to hear about some of the exciting work being done in public works departments nationwide. Where can you watch PWX TV? You'll find our content displayed on screens here at PWX. Switch to the PWX TV channel in select hotels. Find it all online via PWX meeting site. Or head straight to YouTube for the full list of content, including extended versions of our PWX film series. PWX TV is produced by Web's Edge. Make sure to like and share on all our social media as well. But first, let's talk LTAPs and how they can help build your workforce. Training a growing workforce for the ever-evolving responsibilities of public works is a big challenge, but the resources are out there to help. To talk to us about local technical assistance programs and how you can use them to train your workforce, I'm joined by North Carolina LTAP Director, Kate Davidson. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So how big of a challenge is it to train up your staff and what goes into training these new professionals in public works? It's a big challenge. Um, as you may know, we have so many people retiring, leaving the public works field. And so that means we've got all of these young new people who may be coming in straight from high school, straight from college, and really don't have a lot of background or experience. They need to be taught everything um, instead of having you know skilled transfer between so you need to cover the technical skills you need to cover what is public works to some people and you need to cover those really important soft skills as well there's just really it's the entire breadth of everything that an employee might need so how can they get that help one amazing resource for local agencies is the LTAP. It stands for Local Technical Assistance Program. It's a federal program. There is a center in every state as well as one in Puerto Rico. And there's also the Tribal Technical Assistance Program. And there's seven um, TTAPs and they're located regionally. Um, so these centers are tasked with providing training and technical assistance directly to locals, whatever that means in your state, and just are an amazing resource for uh, classes on everything from work zone installation to pipe installation to soft skills like managing conflict. And it, speaking, to the depart speaking to the department specifically, how can they get involved? Yeah, so all you have to do is go to our National Association website. It is um, nltapa.org, nltapa.org, and right on the front is find your LTAP. You can pull the drop down or you can search by state and go directly to your state's LTAP page. It is important to search on the NLTAPA page because LTAPs in different states sometimes have different names. They don't all go by the LTAP persona. So definitely that in LTAPA.org is the best way to find your state's training center. Great, and there is a lot of synergy between NLTAPA, there's a lot of acronyms here, sure. and APWA. So why is that and, and what comes out of that relationship? 
Yeah, so the LTAPs are specifically tasked um, from FHWA to help out locals with roadway responsibility, but as we know, there's so much overlap between individuals with um, roadway responsibility and all the other aspects of public works. So uh, these centers were set up in 82, and we've always had a pretty close relationship with the APWA chapters in our states. A lot of, um, AP, a lot of LTAPers are uh, staff members with APWA or volunteers with APWA. For example, I serve as the North Carolina chapter administrator as well as my state's LTAP director. Um, and it's just because there's so much overlap between the missions between the two. And in fact, because there's so much overlap, all LTAPs have two memberships to APWA as well. Um, so we have our own group membership, just like a local agency has a membership with APWA. Fantastic. Kate Davison, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity. Now to our first feature of the day. The city of Buckeye is fostering a culture of collaboration and employee engagement to meet the challenges of being Arizona's fastest growing city. The City of Buckeye Public Works Department is comprised of five divisions. We have 63 team members, which I'm a part of. We deal with incredible growth. We're the largest city by land mass in Arizona, and our population has really exploded. It's kind of a unique situation in Buckeye because we have residential, we have commercial, industrial. We're starting to get into retail but we also have a lot of rural type land. Being in public works with the city of Buckeye is very exciting. We have an opportunity as a public works team as part of the fastest growing city in the country to grow Buckeye from the ground up. It's exciting to be in Buckeye. We have affordable opportunities that are enticing for families to live, work, and play in Buckeye. Everybody knows that they have a role like a football team, we have a playbook, and we're always looking at ways to win the game. And that's what we're gonna do in Buckeye in the future is we're gonna win the game. As we continue to celebrate the workforce, it's time for one of the perennial highlights of PWX. Let's head down to the APWA National Equipment Rodeo, where equipment operators from across the country compete for the grand prize. Oh, today is the National Equipment Rodeo for PWX, and what an exciting event that we just finalized. We had 70 competitors who competed on a backhoe and a mini excavator, and we're gonna announce the winners in just under an hour here. A great organization that puts together the National Rodeo every year. A lot of these individual states that come have their own in-state competitions, and we all get to compete once it, with each other there. And then if uh, if we win on the state level, a lot of instances we get to travel and come to the Nationals and compete against all this great competition throughout the country. They had to show off their skills in utilizing a backhoe. And then on the mini excavator, they had to show off their skills by picking up a bar and placing a tire on a pedestal and then putting a triangle inside the triangle shape and also picking up some tires use, uh, using the thumb apparatus on the mini excavator. And then they had to pick up a rod and put it into a box. I just messed up in a couple of different ways and just wasn't no good. But now my, my co co-workers here, they done real well. Overall, we've had a good day, but I just didn't do no good. But it, hey, it's great fun. Got to thank, gotta thank our guys back at work for letting us come, our, our, our head, head guys. I mean, we love coming, it's, it's great. There's not a lot that we do in public works that says thank you. I spent 20 years in public works. I'm a former director of public works. And this is a really good way to say thank you, job well done. Coming to PWX is one of those things that's the highlight. There's not a lot of pats on the back or thank yous that happen within public works. And this is one way that we get to say thank you to each and every one of them and to all public works professionals. This year's rodeo competition came down to the wire. But first place, Joe Eads, Metropolitan Sewer District of Kentucky. Congratulations. 
I just wait till my turn and went and hope for the best. It's all mostly a thing of luck for the most part, but I don't know. I just showed up and did it. Yeah, it gives guys a, a chance to kind of show off and get bragging rights for a while. So, yeah, I won last year. Just do your best. Don't be scared to try something new. Great skills on display there at the rodeo. Now to another city. City of Green Bay's team is working hard to improve infrastructure and prepare for the increasing challenges of storms and flooding. The Department of Public Works is the agency that's responsible for taking care of providing the basic human services that people in a city need. The city of Green Bay is located in northeast Wisconsin. We're on the south end of the Bay of Green Bay, which projects off the west side of Lake Michigan. One of the biggest challenges the city faces is flooding. Due to climate change, we have a lot more intense precipitation events happening and more frequently. So everything that we can be doing to plan for the next flooding impact needs to be happening. Green infrastructure is important because they are sustainable. And although higher cost initially, they have the potential to be lower cost in the long term. They're gonna help water quality, reduce localized flooding, reduce heat island effect, and it's making Green Bay a more pleasant place to live. Let's take a look now at a project aimed at helping to build workforce and offer a second chance to formerly incarcerated. City of Columbus Department of Public Service has been working with a woman's prison to train and support restored citizens into essential public works roles. I got involved in this program um, with the City of Columbus. We train and we educate the formerly incarcerated people and um, we tell them about how they can go out and get jobs. We decided to create a partnership with the city of Columbus and they actually hire them. They're interviewed before that they leave prison and they have a job offer before they go home. We started working with the Ohio Department of Corrections Women's Prison uh, in July 2021. Mr. Lewis and Ms. Stahl do an excellent job of training of the ladies. We then interview them before they are released. They know coming out that they have a job offer in hand. So they come out, they come on board with us. Uh, they start in at an entry level position where all you need is a driver's license and a willingness to work. And then we get them through our CDL program and start them into a promotional career. So we're one of the only prisons in the state of Ohio that train on a Bobcat inside the fence. We also do aerial lift training. We do flagger training and um, we do the 10 hour OSHA card um, and we also have an NCCR curriculum that we do the basics of different trades, plumbing, electrical, framing, masonry. This program is so important because it's changing lives, not of the, just of the individuals, but of their friends and their families because once they go out and are successful, then you see it carry on with the rest of everybody else in their lives. There's more to come as we explore the ways Public Works is helping build its workforce. Stand by for our in-depth discussion with leaders from across APWA and across the country. Now let's go to a team committed to excellence for their citizens. It's the City of Lancaster Public Works. Welcome to Lancaster Public Works where our commitment is to serve every member of our community with excellence and dedication. Whether it's providing assistance at our front counter or working behind the scenes, our team is always ready to meet your needs and ensure that Lancaster continues to thrive. The Lancaster Public Works team is dedicated, they're hardworking, and they truly care about the community and they have pride in the city of Lancaster. The vision of Lancaster Public Works is to provide safe and reliable infrastructure through innovation and technology. Whether it's safety, economic development, growth, 
public works is in everything that we do every day. So it's our job as leadership to empower our public works team so that they can benefit the community as a whole. Public Works is, you know, about making communities better and improving the quality of life. And we offer us responders and we try to make everyone else safe. So I think it's important to honor the Public Works professionals who do that work and lose their, uh, you know, unfortunately their life on the job. But back in 2011, there was a major incident up in Vermont and a father and son had passed away responding to their major rain event. And from there, we went to 2014, where uh, an employee was killed while repairing a, a water break. Um, and there was a big, we put a big event together to honor that person, and it's kind of blossomed from there. The Memorial's gonna be in Baltimore, Maryland. It's a neat facility. Um, it's a 1915 pump station. There'll do be a three-story museum, and the Fallen Heroes Memorial will be right on Eastern Avenue, at the Eastern Avenue pump station, on the water in Baltimore, next to Mr. Trash Wheel. Couldn't be a better place. In just a minute, we'll hear from leaders from APWA Milwaukee and Fulton County, Georgia, as we discuss workforce issues in depth First, we got a chance to visit Fulton County. The team there is focused on major projects like a new wastewater treatment plant and an airport. Fulton County is the largest county in the state of Georgia by population. We're a little over 1.1 million people altogether with the entire county made up of 15 different cities. It's got a tremendous importance to the state economy and also the greater Southeast economy. Our Public Works Department has three main functions. We provide drinking water to the area of North Fulton. It's about one-third of the entire county. We provide sanitary sewer service for everybody outside of the city of Atlanta. And we run the Fulton County Executive Airport at Brown Field. We really try to serve our citizens, whether it is providing them drinking water, treating sanitary sewer, or running the general aviation airports. Everything that we do today, we really are trying to strive to make tomorrow better for everybody. From equipment operators to directors, an engaged and well-trained workforce is the backbone to public works departments across the country. To support its membership, the American Public Works Association works hard to stay across current trends and future challenges in the workforce. To discuss what those look like and how we might address them, I am joined by Donna Shea, David Clark, and Gerald Krushke. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you, of course. Uh, my first question is, uh, where are we at today? In, form, in terms of the workforce needed for public works? Are you getting enough in the, in the cities that you need? And speak nationally, please. I'm at the city of Milwaukee, and we have about 2,100 FTEs that exist in the city. Right now, I have about 350 vacancies. So the answer to the question is no. Um, so it's a huge challenge. We're in a better spot than we were two years ago, but it's still a big need in our workforce. I would agree. I mean, all of us are seeing vacancy rates lower than what they were two or three years ago, uh, but it's still challenging to um, not only attract the workers, but after we get them on board a year into it, get them trained, they're usually leaving to go to other higher paid jobs. I mean, I always say that the county is the best training ground for most of our consultants and our contractors that we work with. It's absolutely a national problem. In a meeting on Saturday, there were 300 public works professionals, and we said, who doesn't have a workforce challenge now? And one lone person raised their hand. So it continues to be a challenge, but I do think that there's a lot of solutions that are coming up for us. So and, and speak to those solutions. Yes. So we're finding pockets all over the country of cities and towns and counties that are thinking creatively about how do I recruit these people? How do I bring awareness to public works as a career choice? I, 
and we're starting to put all of that together in a national repository so we can all learn from each other. So we're not all reinventing these same wheels, right? And you were talking about retention. Right. What are some of those challenges? You know, so, some of the challenges, and it varies in within public works, because I have professional staff who are demanding, for lack of a better word, to work from home. And then I have a bunch of crew people who can't work from home, and they want some sort of equity in those types of things. We want to be able to offer the flexibility for, to some of the professional staff, but you can't fill a pothole remotely, you can't fix a water leak remotely, and not one size fits all, but sometimes, especially county HR departments, like to have a one size fits all, a one policy type of thing, and we need more flexibility. Would you agree with that in Milwaukee? Well, I think it, it is a challenge. So I think municipalities have done a great job of creating their internal um, training programs to develop staff, and they get to a certain point where the outside market basically will just take them and, and use them for themselves because they pay more. I mean, we're limited on budgets and taxpayer money, so that's what we see at least locally. And how has the education and training helped with the workforce? I think right now building a culture in your organization that values the employees has a sense of belonging, gives them a purpose, um, and, build, and building leaders that understand how to manage and keep people. Because you can get them, but if you can't keep them, you're not going to be able to sustain your organization. So there are so many training programs being developed now and implemented that are helping these middle managers understand how to lead the future workforce, which, is a, which looks different. The landscape looks different from with the young people coming up. So I think the training that we're building at APWA and locally in the states um, is really going to help that moving forward. And, and more of the training, what I'm happy to see, is happening at our locations as opposed to sending people to it. Uh, a lot of people like to travel, but also a good number of people can't be away from their families and then when they hear they have to be gone for two or three days. It's just too hard for them, but be able to bring training to them either remotely through some type of virtual environments or actually in-person training helps at least continue to give the people the tools that we want them to have. And when we were speaking previously, we were talking about the visibility of these vacant jobs. Speak a little bit about the importance of that. So right now, that's probably one of the huge you know, strategic initiatives of APWA is to increase visibility of public works as a career of choice. For, and that's work every one of us can do. Have we promoted enough people understanding what public works is, what we do, how they can get involved and get a you know, good career out of it? I think that's work everyone can do. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I've done a couple of business improvement kind of district uh, speakings. and. I do a presentation of all the jobs that exist in public works. I think people just think we fix potholes or we fix street lights. There's so many aspects that are out there from accountants to back of house to office workers. I mean, there's so much out there and I've had many conversations with the public going, yeah, I didn't know you did that. You know, a lot of stuff we do goes unseen. You know, you turn on your water or you, you get your garbage recycling picked up. They just figure it's there. They don't understand there's a person behind that. So I think it, it does come into what kind of jobs are out there for this type of profession. And the other thing that I would add is, I think we have to change, and we are changing, how we solicit the, uh, and let the people know that there's vacancies out there. The days of just simply putting it on the government webpage and expect that we're gonna get this pack of applications is long gone. We have to go out and proactively recruit the same way that the private sector goes out and proactively re recruits. We have a good working relationship with our local technical college. We try to grab some people in there. Fulton County is where Atlanta is. We're very fortunate, we have Georgia Tech, so we have a chance to get some of the engineers, but we have to go to them. We can't expect them to find us. We have to find them. Agree, and I also think that for many years we've looked at high school seniors and college graduates, but it's the elementary school kids and middle school kids. I think we need to shift a focus to who are we talking to and is the person delivering the message someone they trust? and trust to say, this is a great opportunity you should look at. So I think there's so many ways we can uh, modify that to be more successful. Thank you all so much for your time. Really great talk. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Lots to think about there. Building the workforce is, of course, an ongoing challenge, but it's been great to celebrate the incredible work our public works teams are doing at all levels. Make sure to watch anything you missed or share with colleagues. But how can you do that? 
Where can you watch PWX TV? You'll find our content displayed on screens here at PWX. Switch to the PWX TV channel and select hotels. Find it all online via PWX meeting site or head straight to YouTube for the full list of content, including extended versions of our PWX film series. PWX TV is produced by Web's Edge. Make sure to like and share on all our social media as well. our next show, we're stepping back to take a look at APWA strategic initiatives, from DEI to workforce development and increasing the visibility of public works. These are all issues you won't want to miss as they play a major role in public works across the country. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.